Hey, good morning. We are in the Asia Tech Podcast Studio. This is Pitch Deck Asia, where we are talking to the people that make the startup ecosystem in Asia so dynamic, so exciting. Obviously, we know the startups, but behind those startups, there are the people who support the startups, the ecosystem builders, the funds, the accelerators, and the organizations who help startup founders like you out there build your businesses and go global. And today, even though we are in Singapore, we are going to Vietnam. So welcoming to the studio, Anais Victor. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to have you here. Yeah. And obviously, French tech Vietnam. There's a lot of stories in there. You are from France. Yeah. You live in Vietnam. You're here in Singapore. Yeah. So where do we start? Let's talk about with the France part. Where are you from originally in France? Uh, from Paris. From Paris. And from Paris. How long have you been in Singapore? Oh, sorry, in not Singapore, in, in Asia. Vienta, in, yeah, in Vietnam, uh, it's uh, seven years. It will be my uh, birthday um, in a few days on the oh, wow. 10th of March. Yes, yeah, the seven years in Vietnam. Yeah, félicitations. Yeah. Merci. So you came to Vietnam to 2012. Yeah. 20, okay. Yeah. And what was the story there? Why? I know there's a history between France and Vietnam yeah. and people do go, but why did you go to Vietnam? Uh, on, on my part, it's a bit different. Is uh, I, I was just graduated in uh, 2010 and I've been working in a very large company in IT with my uh, IT diploma. And um, yes, two years in this large company, uh, but energy and, you know, it's um, it was quite boring for me. I was uh, looking for a challenging opportunity. So this is how I've been traveling to Thailand and I was looking for a job abroad in, in Asia. And I was looking for a job, looking for a job when one guy told me one day, and he's, he's still in Vietnam, so thanks to him, Denis uh, Trobs, who told me, okay, go, take a flight, come. I have nothing for you in Vietnam. Just take a flight and you will see. Mm. You stay one month, two months, three months, and you go back to France. But at least you come. It will be easier for you to find a job. And I had the chance that when I left my previous job, um, within two months, finally, I, I got this ticket to, to fly on the, the 10th of March, 2012. <laughs> and I found a job in between. And, you know, when you go to an interview and you say, OK, look, I have my flight. I have my flight ticket. I'm coming. I'm arriving. OK. We want you, you start 10 mm. days after you, you arrive. So this is in Ho Chi Minh? Yes. Right. So you just, had you ever been there before? Have you been to Vietnam before this time? So this was the first time. Yeah, it was the first time. Right. Describe to me that experience when you landed in <laughs> Saigon Airport. What was it like? The first experience, because Thailand is a lot more easier yes a lot more touristy yes. right vietnam yes. still has that hustle and how was it for you like you came from paris which is a busy city but to yeah you've been already to saigon yeah in the airport yeah you know how yeah, much people you have welcome welcoming yeah, you absolutely. Okay. welcoming yeah, <laughs> for your, with your baggage yeah, i'll look after exactly. that right? so the, the first impression is okay you're just leaving your family you you it's quite hard i mean uh, it's intense when you leave your family you're going abroad you don't know if you will stay one year, two year, and and more. Yeah. So you are in a mindset where even and you don't know the country. So you arrive, you see so much people. And I remember that uh, I was even afraid to go in the street to find food because I was like, I see in the street, I I I don't understand anything. And you can't cross the road yeah, as well. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, right? And and I was starving. I said, okay, let's go. Yeah. You don't care, you go. And this is how I started to say, okay go you will mm. see you'll find out you will start in 10 days so you have the time to get this adaptation mm. to, to the street and and i think that the the, the best thing to do is to start uh, with um, a shared um, shared house with people so this is how i i met uh, my next roommates and and then everything is coming easy because mm. they've been there for a few years they can tell you the way tell you what you can do what you can do and everything is going smoothly then, so. Yeah, I, I, there's so much I want to ask you. I want to ask you about Vietnam. I want to ask you about French tech in Vietnam as well. The Vietnam scene, what it's like there at the moment, because it's very interesting to everybody looking from the outside at Vietnam. There's a lot of stories told about what Vietnam could become in yeah. the next 10 years, obviously the comparisons to China and all that sort of thing. Um, 
But you've already started talking about a very interesting story, which is that idea of you go to a place, you starve, you learn to adapt, you meet people. In a way, there's so many parallels with being a startup entrepreneur as well. You're out of your comfort zone. You have to survive, yeah. right? Because you don't yeah. eat otherwise, right? Um, when you were going through this experience in the early days in Ho Chi Minh and, you know, you, some days you were hungry, <laughs> some days you were, you know, it's all different, even the, the, the script, the language, yeah. you know, it's not readable. Ah, you... it's readable for us because right. it's, it's the same alphabet. Okay, so in Roman? Yeah. Okay, but you didn't actually understand what it was saying though, right? Yeah. You didn't speak Vietnamese before you went? No, 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 no. Right, okay. No, so no. It was yeah, all yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it was all new to you. Um, how was that the sort of the first six months of being in that place? What sort of experience was it for you? Was it like really exciting, happy experience? Or what was the reality? Um, I, I think that the, the, the fact that I, I've been welcome in this house with uh, people who have been there already, it was, uh, I mean, on the, the personal part, it was uh, perfect because you get the right direction and you know directly what you, you can do, how we can do, where you can mm. go out. And you meet a next turn it, uh, I mean, the extended friends of those mm. people, so it's it's quite easy, and you you get many friends at the beginning, and then it's it's more on the professional uh, part that it's interesting, like, like you say. It's, um, Vietnam is a country where um, at the beginning, the six first months, uh, people from France were saying, "Oh, you are always in holidays. Uh, oh, it's uh, sunny. It's good." No, come, come on, just come in Vietnam, you will understand. It's very difficult at the beginning. You, mm. you just need to, to observe what's going on, how people are working. You need to adapt. You need to, to understand everything first so that then you can know what you can learn from them, what you can bring to them. And this is how you have to adapt. You cannot just come and manage a team in, in Vietnam like you did before in mm. France. So I think it's interesting because you're developing this approach where you are really observing and trying to adapt and there is a big impact on yourself because there are things that you will change at this moment. Mm. You say, okay, in the communication first, okay, I can't do that like I was doing in, in France. For example, what did you have like day-to-day -day examples of that? Because often it's small things, isn't it, that you don't realize? It's uh, it's it's more, um, and I will give you exactly the the, the term. Um, I've been learning the what we call the non-violent communication. At the beginning, you think violence it's about hitting someone, but yeah. it's more about how you can slightly hurt someone with some words that are part of your culture and mm. and that you will use like as usual. Like uh, you will talk to your brother, your sister, mm. your father, and it's okay because since yours, it's okay to say things like that. But right. in another country, you need to do to do this and to adapt with a slight change in your communication because, yeah, in Vietnam you can hurt people, and this is where I mean the, the biggest adaptation that you have mm. to do is here, and also understand how people uh, get to be empowered, what they need and where they are struggling at. And this is how you have this part of observation that you need at the beginning. Mm. Yeah, and you have to want to do that. I mean, you mentioned an interesting word, well, two words, serve and adapt. You have to want to put yourself in that position. You have to want to adapt. Yeah. Now, we're here in Singapore and here there is an expat community. Mm. And when I mean expat, I mean, there are people who come here, they have very well-paid jobs, they go to expensive restaurants, they hang mm. out with people who look like themselves, and you know they never really yeah. integrate, because it's easier here in Singapore, because there's more of those people. But there are many of those pockets around Asia. And it's always a challenge, isn't it, when you go to a, a, a new country, is to force yourself into the local scene. Yeah. I mean, I lived in Japan in the 90s and it, there's an expat bubble there as well. Mm. It's easy to hang around with expats, expat bars, complain about your hosts and say how much better it is back home and so on. H how do you sort of make sure that you step out and integrate with the local culture and you know, 
surround yourself with those mm. kind of people. So in, in, in Vietnam, basically, uh, f- for me in the position where I was uh, working in product and um, coaching the teams uh, to the agile methodologies, um, I had to force myself sometimes because, um, you know, people are always asking, do you have Vietnamese friends? Um, it's not that we don't have Vietnamese friends. It's just that we have friends, but the, the, the friends that we have is more people that we meet at work mm. with who sometimes you have to make this step where you say, okay, going to the karaoke, okay, I will do it because I know you want you want it. You want me to join, to join the, the, the party with you. So it's how much you are ready to do. And mm. even you if at the beginning... Uh, karaoke, okay. Uh, I'm let's tired. Go. I yeah, do I'm it. tired. You, like, you got to force yourself. But then you enjoy so much. Yeah. You enjoy so much being with the, the, those people and um, just having the, enjoying this time with them. And even more and more, um, Vietnamese have this um, culture of being together and even becoming like a kind of family. So I've been also uh, doing like one hour to two hour bike uh, to go to a dinner at a table where no one can really speak a good English and mm. you're here but it's more about it's okay it's not a problem I will maybe spend one hour two hour mm. where I can't understand anything but at least I'm here with them and this is what matter for them mm. and once you reach this point then you can develop a better um, relationship with them and you get then to grow with them, in fact. And this mm. is what's important, I think. Yeah, Vietnam. yeah, it's, a, it's an important skill. It's, it's better for you, in your experience, anybody who moves to a new country, your experience of that country yeah. will be much better if you force yourself in those situations yeah. to go out and do these things. Cause it's easy to get into a routine, isn't it? Yeah. Think, it's Friday, I'm tired, I'm going to go home, watch yeah. TV. That's what we do. But you got to force yourself, be the yes person exactly. and go out there exactly. and volunteer. Exactly. It's hard, right? Yeah, it's yeah. hard. Um, a, lot of, a lot is said about Vietnam and the startup ecosystem. The startup e- ecosystem, tech ecosystem is still new, you know, and it's still developing in places like Vietnam. Why do you think Vietnam is particularly interesting in Asia mm. right now? Because there's Thailand, there's Malaysia. Here in Singapore, it's much more evolved mm. and developed got Indonesia what, what's unique about Vietnam what does mm. Vietnam have yeah. that makes it worth looking at yeah so um, I, I will come back to my IT background and the, the fact that uh, I had also to code and I hated that when I, I was uh, younger but the thing is that when you love uh, you're passionate about mathematics it makes sense then uh, to apply this logic and um, discovering that coding is not only about uh, blah, 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 mm. but it's more about the, the logic, the algorithm and the, the mathematics. Um, I think that in Vietnam what people maybe forget sometime, somehow is that Vietnamese are really good mathematicians. Mm. They, are re- they have a very good logic and they are really good at thinking about algorithm. Why? And it's I couldn't explain that, but is it's, it the schools? It's, it's, yeah, it's. Like I, I think it's at school. It's the, the, the way they, 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 they uh, regarding the education that mm. they are giving to them, and uh, but it's something that you can hear when we you, you discuss with many different people. I would say they are really good at mathematics, and I think that this is the link to the fact that Vietnam can offer very good developers. Mm. They have a real big pool of talented developers. So this is how the tech has been growing and growing. And to be honest, I, I know that the, the offshore uh, has been growing um, during the, the past few years, around 2005, 2010. Mm. But when we have some discussion with different entrepreneurs about uh, um, the skills, the technical skills, and I've been working in Thailand, so I've been working with uh, developers in Thailand. I mm. can tell you that the Vietnamese people have this level of tech that is really, really different compared to any other country. And there is a, a mindset. Honestly, I don't, I, I can't explain 
you exactly where it comes from mm. because I don't know enough about the the, 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 the culture, the the past, and uh, the education, the rules. The it's but right. I can tell you that they are really talentous. Right. So, yeah, I mean. There was a history, like you said, of, of Vietnamese developers and databases and design and game design as well. It was mm. big for, for many years. And now we're starting to see startups yeah. coming out of Vietnam. Yeah. What about the work ethic in Vietnam? Because you've mentioned Thailand as an example. Mm. Um, by comparison, Vietnam is obviously very close to China. Mm. And China's famous for the work ethic, you know, like the 996, which is like Chinese work, nine o'clock in the morning to nine at night, mm. six days a week, right? How is it in Vietnam? What are they like? Are they, you know, do they work long hours? Are they hustling? Do they really want to work? Or still people still have that mindset of, I get a good job, a safe job, and I'm okay. It's changing. It's, it's, it's hard to give, a, you know, a, uh, typical answer. There's the, there is no right answer at this question mm. because um, yes, what is interesting is that because I've been working over the last seven years in Vietnam and with uh, IT teams, I've been the evolution. I've been seeing and feeling this evolution. When I arrived in 2012, uh, yeah, the guys were definitely there just to code, just to mm. can can say in in French. Pisser le code means <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you just do the code and you don't care. You don't care about the impact. You don't care about uh, everything around and what is the value that you, you, you bring to, to the user, to the, the, the client. But years after years, uh, and it's really changing in Vietnam, and I would say that's around like 2016, I've, been, I've seen su surprising things, like the fact that many books about statistics, about... Uh, in um, artificial intelligence, by any other tech and new trends coming, books which are now translated into Vietnamese, mm. and it's the developers, the, the the tech people who are ordering that and who are trying to grow on that. So there is a, a change, but not everyone. You mm -hmm. still have this in the culture, the, the, this. Um, culture around the family, how much the, the, the family is important, and etc. And you have a part of people who just want to get paid and do mm. the job. But we are starting to see other people who are dreaming to become uh, Facebook, Google, and mm. build their own company. And this is why you see people who are trying to get to grow on this path. Mm. And this is how since maybe two years, I would say, you see more and more Vietnamese startup coming. And the most important point, and you can realize it only if you go to Vietnam, is the dynamics that you have in the city. It's noisy, it's mm. moving, it's, it's here. And, and you can feel it that it's not like when we are in France and, okay, it's cool and... So you cannot translate that in, into the, the entrepreneurship, mm. entrepreneurship mindset. But in Vietnam, and for many of my friends, when you are here, you have no chance to do something else that being an entrepreneur, it's mm. here. It's moving and everyone is an entrepreneur in Vietnam. If you look at that in the streets, they, they, they want to just to feed their family. They go, they open a shop, they, yeah. they, they start to to cook for any other food, they are here, they do the things. They hustle, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the challenge here in Asia, isn't it? Is that some places in Asia, like here in Singapore, have been successful for many years and therefore it's comfortable. Yeah. Therefore, why be a startup entrepreneur if you can work for a bank or a law firm? Yeah. So that exists and therefore it's hard for a new generation to come through and see the benefit of a startup mm. when, especially when you talk about family, it's big here in Asia. Mm. Like, you know, I didn't put you in medical school to go join a startup. Mm. I want you to become a doctor. Or I want you to become an accountant. Or I want mm. you to have a safe job. There's a lot of pressure there in family yeah. conversations and so on. Yet there's a generation coming through now who, as we're seeing it in Vietnam, who think a bit differently about this and are willing to take a bit of a risk. Mm. I was in um, 
Shanghai not too long ago, and it was a national holiday. And I went to Shanghai, and I went to China Accelerator, which is the big, ex the biggest accelerator in mm. Shanghai. And it was a national holiday. I turned up, and my friend Kapil said, "I'm really sorry. I forgot to tell you. It's a national holiday. Like it's all shut down." Mm. Right? Oh God! Like we're gonna go and meet all these people and do some interviews. It's, oh. I didn't realize because you don't know which cities have different holidays and so on because yeah. you're traveling. But we went to China Accelerator, their co-working space, on a national holiday. It was full. Yeah. Everybody was there on a day off, a day off working on their thing. People were drinking beer. People were talking. It was noisy. The place was packed. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's like you say, like everybody is here. They cannot but be a startup founder. That is the only choice. So I guess now, talking about it in the context of Vietnam, Okay, we've got this, the first level, mm. which is entrepreneurs who want to be entrepreneurs, mm. the talent. Let's talk about the next level, which is support. Mm. So what's happening in Vietnam now is supporting that talent. You know, where are we with, you know, the co-working spaces and the accelerators and mm. all that sort of the organizations that support founders? Mm. Are we seeing some sort of like growth in that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, at very different stage, uh, meaning that um, you have now more and more accelerator incubators, um, co-working spaces growing and growing because when we gathered to launch La French Tech Vietnam in 2014, I remember there was maybe only one real first co-working space in, in Ho Chi Minh and it was not clear, but now they, they feel that yeah, there is a place, there is an opportunity. Mm. So we see many and, and many coming. Uh, we work just uh, arrived recently uh, in Ho Chi Minh. Um, and you have all of that. But then regarding the, the startup, to my mind, uh, it's my personal op opinion, it's not mature enough. And I had this dic discussion as also in um, um, uh, high school, uh, where they try to create an incubator to help the new graduated student to support also some startup project. Mm. And they were telling me, um, it's good, we have the investment, we have the place, but still something missing about the ideas because it's easy to say, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to launch a startup, but... There is a path, there is mm. a posture. And I think that in Vietnam, there are many ideas, there are many things to do. You, you, you see problems that you want to solve everywhere in the street. So it's easy to, to, to have this mm. environment to find an idea to, but then the execution is another game. Mm. And this is this part uh, that need to be structured and people need to understand that um, being an entrepreneur is not only about an ID and uh, launching a startup. There is also the execution, mm. which is the biggest part. Yeah. And I, in the, the, the support that we should bring to Vietnam, to my mind after seven years, is mm -hmm. helping them to just structure this execution and go step by step on the paths. Yeah. No, it's an interesting way of looking at it. You're right there's a lot of ideas out there. Mm. Talent, yeah. right? The support side is really about trying to organize and help structure those ideas. Mm. Because there's a lot of probably young people who want to do something, yeah. solve, fix something, like you say, but how do I do that, right? Yeah. That's where you need mentors and you need advisors and exactly. you need programs yes. and so on. I don't know the numbers on Ho Chi Minh, um, but you said co-working spaces, there's a lot more now. Yeah. accelerators Wh who's really doing interesting work at the moment in ho chi minh what sort of programs or ecosystem builders are interesting right now who are pioneering obviously you say we works in there but i guess there's a lot more players in there doing stuff i i think we have at least uh three or four programs that to my mind are doing well uh we also have on our side, uh, under the Chum French Chamber of, of Commerce, an mm. accelerator to help a young entrepreneur in any business, not only uh, about uh, tech. French entrepreneurs or? French, but Vietnamese? also Vietnamese, oh, yeah. uh, foreigners. Uh, we are welcoming everyone. And it's, it's hard to say uh, 
what is the good program mm. because it's it's based on the success story that yeah. you can see behind that um, and it's also based on your opinion about how you support um, you support a startup and here in the accelerator that we are running under the chamber of commerce um, it's really interesting because it's a volunteer initiative from mentors mm. in the chamber of commerce who realized that they couldn't get this help 20 years ago when they launched their business. And today they are in business, they're running business, it's working well, but they want to give back something, to give back this help that they mm. couldn't find 20, 15 years ag ago. Mm. And I, I think it's interesting because it's a non I mean, it's a non-profit accelerator. And this is the difference. When you have a private accelerator, that what they want. They have a startup. Mm. They just want to put an investor in front of the startup to get the, the, the money, the cash, mm. Mm. so that they can run their business, for sure. But here, because it's a non-profit initiative, we are more talking about we want you to success. We just want you to success. Mm. So we'll be straight with you. Maybe we'll tell you, no, we don't think that your project can success, but look, this is what you have to change. Mm -hmm. to. And then it's also, we won't present you, introduce you to this investor because we don't know him. We, we are not sure that it's an uh, investor that will bring you something great or with who you we have a good relationship so it's all about that and all about the, the way you support a startup mm. and it's based on what you are convinced today that a startup need mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how you are convinced about what does it mean to be an entrepreneur today mm -hmm. yeah any, any sort of new ecosystem needs that because those people can take a bigger risk in who they want to work with and the time they want to give yeah. with people. That's the sort of the first stage before the private accelerators yeah. start coming. They'll come when people start seeing, okay, we need to kind of really organize this and we need to structure it. That sort of happens, but we need those people who want to give often without anything like financially in return, mm. just to help support the yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. What kind of startups are interesting. I mean, for example, if you go to Singapore, Singapore's, when it comes to startups, it's fintech, it's blockchain, mm, yeah. because it has the history and it has a yes. great regulation environment. Yeah, sure. Thailand might be more sort of food tech or mm. travel. Yeah. You know, everybody has their sort of local yeah. theme. What is it in Vietnam? What kind of startups are we seeing? The, the, f the, the first thing that I see is that uh, we start to have a lot of HR tech startup. Mm. Um, because the, the recruitment in, in Vietnam is uh, really painful for everyone. So we can see that we have this uh, development about um, HR resource, how to, how to simplify the process to recruit uh, people, mm. how to find the right people and to just limit the turnover. So there is a, a big part of startup that are growing and growing about the, the just the, the HR part. Right. Are they, they, they HR tech for for Vietnamese companies to recruit Viet or manage Vietnamese people or are they HR tech tech for the world? How is it sort of like it's, a local problem? It's uh, yeah, yeah. There is a, a local problem to recruit the tech right. talent. I see. But you have also some other problem that some startup identify um, just to for, for very, very big company in e-commerce, mm. uh, because yeah, we, we have the, the, the e-commerce e uh, growing fast in, in Vietnam. So all the startup around e-commerce data and um, also uh, regarding the cash transaction mm. and the delivery. So mm. um, it's for me the main part where you see more and more startup growing. And after, I was at the pitch competition. It was uh, funny. Or we have students. Some ideas are really funny. It's about how can you um, find someone to pick up your motorbike in you if you are far away and that uh, you have a, you are in trouble and mm. um, okay you're lost. Um, we have some students who are talking about how we we can rent books so that we save money. So it's many small ideas to save money to mm. to find the right person in very different area it's real estate uh, logistics transport so there is everything to do in vietnam i right, would say right. so 
Um, so that pitch competition that you were in, those were university students? Yeah. Right. 17 to 19 years old. 17 to 19, wow. Very good English, really yeah. good ideas. I, I've been really surprised. Right. So these, so, so you're 17 year old teenagers, 19, yeah. te- these are still teenagers, right? Yeah. Um, are they doing this as part of their course or are they doing it because they want to do it? Is it, is it like an elective in their course? I mean, I, I've been invited to this competition. I, I guess it's um, something that has been organized internally, yeah. a part of the 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 what they were studying, as we had in uh, my previous in- engineering school, where you can decide to be in this um, startup association yeah. and you can try to start to run your program. You have mentors and etc. But it means that at this moment, you, you already have a kind of an idea of... Yeah. Um, feeling that you want to to go to through this path of entrepreneurship and mm. so but how did you feel about those youngsters and their attitude towards startups and their pitches i mean it must have been quite for you quite rewarding to see these young people who are really yeah. passionate about it maybe some of their ideas are a bit crazy but you need that right you need yeah. people who think yeah. really like yeah. long term or like too big or too out there yes um do they do it in a certain way? Is there, is there a unique quality about those Vietnamese startups that you might not get back in Europe, for example? Mm. I mean, do they think about things in a different way or there's a slight twist, which is very local way of thinking about things? I, I, I think that those young people, and this is what's in, interesting in, in the, the way they, in the, the, the ideas they were pitching is that they are trying to solve the problems of their own country. Mm. So, yeah, for the moment, it's 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 more local thing, but it doesn't mean that they cannot they can't expand because they have there is other markets, similar markets around Cambodia, Thailand. Mm. But yeah, when you look at their ideas, it's mainly about and how can I help my country to grow? Mm. And the, the, the Vietnam reached seven percent growth last year and. There is this energy of people who really want to give back to the country and help the, the, those people. Mm. So um, for the, me, it's, yeah. The, there tends to be, you mentioned some of the, the, the startups as well, like delivery, logistics, or um, payments. <laughs> they, they tend to be like, you know, we've seen this a lot. I mean, it, for those people who are sort of watching or listening outside of Asia, we see this a lot in emerging markets where, it's broken you know this doesn't work here in this country you know last mile delivery um even you're talking about motorbikes for example any kind of transport payment systems you know you have to start from zero or the banks are so slow yeah so people just have to say okay it doesn't work how do we fix it how do we create a solution because this isn't working if we want to grow this country we've got to fix this first People aren't necessarily thinking, you know, how do I create a social media app? We have billions of users. They're thinking, look, this is broken. I need to fix it. And that's sort of very unique to fast growth developing markets, right? And we see a lot of that here in Asia. So anybody looking outside who's looking for, you know, that billion dollar social media app, it's not here. It's those infrastructure apps. We, I mean, Thailand's developing them. Indonesia's growing its own. And maybe Vietnam will produce its own unicorn at some point around that. You know, I, that I, would be interesting. I, I guess because if you just take the story about uh, Uber versus Grab in Vietnam, I, I think it's exactly where the point is. Um, Uber just copy, copied and pastes the model. Grab came and just adapt and adapts has been adapting so much mm. years after years because I'm using Grab since a long time. So I know I've, they've been adapting and understanding the, the real particularities of the country. And this makes the difference for the company will be able to, to grow. It's mm. by growing with Vietnam. So yeah, sure, you have your first idea, you come, it's not working, but okay, what can you do differently? How you can adapt? And it will come later on. Mm. And it's, as we say, if you are not part of the solution, you're maybe part of the problem. For me, it's uh, don't just keep your ideas. J- just keep being open to, to see that there are some other things that you can do first. 
And we always say, oh, yeah, but um, no, there are so many things that I have to fix before I can mm. just launch my ID. Okay, so come and try to fix them. Yeah. Be, Start with one. Be, point, yeah, yeah. Be this person who will fix that and then yeah. you will be in place. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Anais, you came in 2012. You were ahead of the curve. You were a pioneer. One of, you know, there wasn't a trend of French people going to Vietnam back then. Yeah. Just the crazy ones, right? Mm, and yeah. obviously, historically, there were still some French leftovers in Vietnam. Now, in 2019, is there a trend? Are French people, you know, if I was to graduate now in France, is Vietnam on my option list? Are people now back yeah. in France talking about Vietnam in a different yeah. way? How, how, I, you must be uh, close to those conversations. Yeah. I, I, I see uh, even on, on our Facebook group, we have a lot of demands of people who are willing to just come uh, to find an internship in, in Vietnam. And it's growing and growing be because um, it's, yeah, it's a lot of students want to go uh, to Singapore for some reason, mm. to Thailand for some other reason. But I guess that the people... The French people who are coming to to Vietnam, it's first because you have also this uh, Vietnamese community um, in France, and we are close to, to to this community. Depending where you live in Paris, you you meet you have many Vietnamese friends for sure, and the connection is also about okay. We, we are just celebrating like forty five years of uh, diplomatic relationship with Vietnam. Mm. There is something where you have a lot of Vietnamese speaking French. And yes, both countries are, you know, I think both countries are bringing people in the two, two cents, yeah, yeah. the, the two directions, yeah. by both ways. So um, this is why we still see a lot of French people coming, mm. a lot, a lot of French people coming. And also because the last point I would say is it's a challenging country. So you don't go to Vietnam just because you just want to enjoy the, the sun, the, the fact that it's a, it's a beautiful country, the food is excellent. Mm. I think mostly people want also to go out of their comfort zone. Yeah, adventure. Yeah. Yeah, and so to those people who are thinking about it, they may listen to this story and your story and think, I want to do like a nice did i want to go to vietnam it's not all easy is it it's not straightforward we're not going on holiday here right yeah. you know what advice would you give somebody because they may be there's lots of things in their head like what happens if i don't like it what happens if i can't find a job mm. you know uh, i'm scared and all, all those kind of thoughts going through their head it's easier now than it was when you went, obviously, because, you know, there's a lot more information. There's a support network. Mm. Any advice that you would offer somebody thinking about it now, seriously, about coming to Vietnam yeah. from yeah. Paris or any, anywhere yeah. in France? Yeah. I would say if you have to come to Vietnam, you have to come for the right reasons. So meaning you are not, like I mentioned before, you are not coming because it's sunny. Mm. I, I did the mistake. I came thinking that, Oh, it's sunny all the year. It's perfect. And after three months, you get the raining season. And yeah. it's just horrible Reality. the first time. <laughs> sure. So, no, it's, it, it's not an easy country. There are many things that we are underestimating before we are coming. Um, there are the accident on the road with the motorbike. Mm. There is the pollution. There are many things. But I guess and it's something that you don't need to have right at the beginning when you come. But at least if you develop that, this just this desire to develop the country, to contribute to something, to say, I've been there, I've been supporting them, I've been helping them to grow, I've been giving them the direction. At this moment, if you are you just are more oriented about the impact that you want to have in Vietnam, mm. then you are coming for the right reason. Yeah. And a great reason as well. I think there are few countries in the world where you can make a real impact like yeah. that. In France, in England, the same, that things take time. Yeah. And there is a process. And, you know, you have to know the right person and wait your time and get your qualification mm. because history. Mm. Yet you go to a place like Vietnam, things move fast. 
you meet people, you get introductions, yeah. opportunities open for you and you, you take them, right? Yeah. So in terms of mobility and opportunity, you know, it seems like Vietnam is kind of where China was more than 10 years mm. ago yeah. after the Olympics. Mm. A lot of people who went to China early on, like to Shanghai and Beijing, they didn't have the right qualification. They didn't have 20 years of experience, mm. but they were presented an opportunity and they took it. Mm. You know, I know people who, who got onto TV or became radio hosts, even mm. though they couldn't speak Mandarin, yeah. right? Yeah. Just because they were there and they took it, yeah. right? I sense, as an observer, that is happening in Vietnam yeah. now. Yeah. So for the right people, it's the right opportunity. Exactly. You know, if you want the adventure and come with all the right mindset, like you shared with us today. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's been a real privilege. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us and your sort of chapter um, of your story in Vietnam as well. Yeah. If I'm watching this or I'm listening and I'm inspired by your story and I want to reach out, um, I may be in Vietnam. I may be coming to Vietnam. I may be thinking about Vietnam. What's the first step for me? How, how do I sort of, how do you want people to contact you? Um, I think ideally it's um, just uh, trying to reach uh, La Frenche Vietnam. You will find someone who knows me somehow. And I mean, because um, as I'm now working for La Frenche Vietnam and uh, as a full time job and um, organizing everything, trying to build this connection between the Vietnamese ecosystem and the French ecosystem, yeah. You can find me, just type yeah, yeah. Anna is Victor, you'll find me on the social network anywhere and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open to support anyone and uh, to introduce awesome. to our communities and yeah. Yeah, it's a good community. Obviously we had on the show just recently Thibaut and Julien from yeah. here in Singapore. Um, everybody seems to know everybody. It's a good network. I want to ask you a stupid question because somebody may be thinking this. Do I need to be French? Not at all. Right. Not Do all. I need to speak French? Not at all. It helps, but no. Yeah. no. This right. is why we call it French tech. It's, right. in, it's in English and it's open to anyone. And it, it's just that, yeah, for sure, we are bringing something, a, a small part of French. And yeah. But no, definitely it's open to everyone and even more. Because those experts who are in the community, those French people, they want to connect mm. with people who are different who can where they can learn from each other. So Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I'm a great believer that, you know, when you travel, when you step outside your comfort zone, the the similarities between you and people of different backgrounds, mm. different nationalities, different languages are so strong compared to like, for example, your own you know, the people you left behind mm. back home, the same yeah. with me, right? Yes. It's like you identify with those people because we've all been through similar challenges, yeah. right? And we've yeah. taken similar experiences. So reach out. We will put all the details in the show notes. That's a nice Victor from La French Tech Vietnam. in Vietnam. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, also I think, you know, you, you've sold the, the Vietnam story to us and I love what you're doing. I love how you're supporting the ecosystem as well. Mm. Um, you're very much a, a kindred spirit as an adventurer as well. So, you know, anybody who feels that, then please make contact and let them know that you watch this program as well or listen to this podcast. So it's a good starting point. Anais, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci. <laughs>